The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A baker had a very good business going on Main Street. Except in the middle of his morning crowd, he always noticed that a man walked in every day about 9.30, entered through the doors, closed his eyes, and just took in a deep breath. You know, all those wonderful bakery smells. He would smile, and then he would leave. (laughs) Day after day after day, the baker finally had it with this. And the next time the man came in and closed his eyes and smelled and smiled, right before he left, the baker was there and put a bill in his hand. And the man looked at it and said, $30 for what? He said, I'm charging you for the smell of my bread. (laughs) The next day at 9.30, the man walked in, closed his eyes, Took in the smell, reached in his bag, pulled out a metal can filled with coins. He just made as much noise as he could in the bakery. The baker ran over and said, what the heck do you think you're doing? And he said, I am paying for the smell of your bread with the sound of my money. (laughs) Today's gospel lesson is all about smells and money. Yes, it is. That's today's story. It's a, it's, a, it's a great story. I mean, it's all about this smell of this perfume and how it fills the house. How fitting for today. You can fill the house with so many things. God's house is going to be filled with the smell of bread baking this afternoon as the First Communion students do that as part of their learning. We are filling this place with light through beautiful windows, through laughter, and through the music of J.S. Bach. We are filling the house, and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. In our gospel lesson today, the one whose action fills the house with all things good is Mary. And this is, I know there's lots of Marys in the New Testament. This is Mary of Bethany. If you don't know Mary of Bethany, put her at the top of your list. 
If I was going to hang a poster in my office of any Bible character, it'd be Mary of Bethany. I think I got a little bit of a crush on her. She's awesome. She rocks. She is the greatest character in the Gospels. This is why I love Mary of Bethany. You don't mess with her. She is the most fierce follower of Jesus, and she does things that are totally unexpected. And interestingly, it always involves the feet of Jesus. For example, with Mary of Bethany, what you will see is just a chapter, just a few chapters earlier, we have heard the story from Luke's gospel about Jesus coming to their house, the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, the house that Frederick Buechner said is probably the one place Jesus could take off his sandals and not be the Messiah for an hour or two. He was close to these folks. And while he was at the house, if you remember, while Martha's up waiting on him hand and foot, Mary is sitting at his feet listening to him teach. She has crossed a societal line. She has not been put in her place by her gender. She has claimed a position of disciple. It makes her sister angry, and Jesus defends her. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and learns from him. And then in John, just a chapter earlier, we have the story of Lazarus' death. How Jesus is delayed in getting there, and when he shows up, Lazarus is dead. Martha, of course, is very politically correct in how she addresses him on this issue of his tardiness and her brother's death. Mary, however, when she hears Jesus is there, runs out, drops to her knees at his feet, and says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Wow. And what does Jesus do? He cries. Mary of Bethany makes Jesus cry with her outright honesty about her pain and her suffering. And then today, we find her at the feet of Jesus, breaking open a jar of 300 denarii. That's the wages for one worker for a whole year, a year's, a year's wages, and lavishing it upon Jesus' feet. And then dropping her hair down to wipe his feet, which again is, oh, crossing the line. She's lifted up as a disciple, a follower par excellence. She's amazing, and she's wonderful. She fills the house with the fragrance of the perfume. And then we get the stink bomb. The sound of money. Judas. Ugh. This is 300 denarii we blew here. We could have we fed a lot of poor people with this. So you're lavishing on his feet. I mean, he just really lets them have it. Now, John, the gospel writer, has to give us a little aside here in case we think, what, the poor don't matter? He has to say, wait a minute. You've got to understand this guy. Don't listen to his words. Listen to his actions. He really doesn't, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the poor. Not at all. That's not an issue for him. He cares about the money. That's where he's focused. I remember, wow, back in college, I can't even remember what legislation it was in Congress being voted on, but it was some program focused on helping the poor. And one of the politicians who was against it said, you know, well, Jesus said we're always going to have the poor with us, so there's no reason to help them. They're just going to be here no matter what we do. If that's your reading of today's gospel, whew, you missed the point. Jesus is not saying that. Jesus is saying, you want to love the poor? You can do that every day. And when you look at all the other teachings of Jesus and the writings of Paul, the encouragement is there, yes, that is Jesus' preferred way of us to show our love for him, is to love one another, especially those most in need. No, Jesus recognizes what's going on here. Mary's outpouring of generosity has to do with the gratitude she feels toward the one who has raised her brother 
from the dead. What's the old joke about the doctor who was out to eat in a restaurant and a patron starts choking on a chicken bone? The doctor jumps up, does the Heimlich maneuver, saves the person's life. They say, Doc, this is great what I owe you. You don't owe me anything. No, no, I insist. You did a medical procedure here in a restaurant. What do I owe you? How much? And the doctor said, half of what you would have paid me while the bone was still in your throat. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, things are priceless when it comes to life and death. It's a whole different scheme of things. Mary has her brother back. She is throwing this, they're throwing this dinner for Jesus as a big thank you. She is just outpouring her generosity because she can't have it. Because she is so happy, because she just can't say enough. And so she shows it with her actions towards Jesus. But we're hearing that rude rattling of coins as the treasurer Judas is upset with what has happened here. you got to dig a little deeper. There's more life and death going on here than you see. Jesus has a price upon his head. It was one of the reasons he was delayed in getting there when Lazarus was dying. They were out to kill Jesus. And once he raised Lazarus from the dead, we're told in John's Gospel that now they were really serious, even more so, at putting an end to Jesus, and they added Lazarus to the list as well. In the midst of all this, you think Mary's going to care about perfume that may not even be able to be used tomorrow? In the midst of all this, she celebrates life. Jesus has a price upon his head. Judas has calculated the price of the ointment on his feet. And you know the irony of it all? Judas will sell Jesus for a tenth of that price. Wow. Wow. Mary of Bethany may appear in two other stories we don't know. She's just could be one of any of the Marys that show up who are at the feet of Jesus at the foot of the cross, who carry ointment to his tomb on an Easter Sunday morning to anoint his body and find him gone. Mary of Bethany is us. We are disciples of Jesus and sit at his feet. We kneel at the feet of Jesus and honestly proclaim our hurts and our needs. We give praise to Jesus and give thanks to Jesus for the gift of life. In holy baptism, we are at the foot of the cross and we are at the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Her story is ours. And what we do this morning illustrates the heart of this gospel. Did you notice how we fill this church with the music of J.S. Bach right after we watched a wonderful video celebrating over a quarter century of Servant Saturdays and how we're going to go out and help others in the name of the one whose feet we would gladly anoint with ointment and thanksgiving. You can't separate the praise and the service, that we come here to be lifted and filled and to rejoice and to praise so that we can be sent out into the week empowered to serve and to make a difference. We go out into a world that is obsessed with the sound of money, and we fill it with the smell of bread the bread of life, Jesus, our Lord. Amen.